Welcome to Whiskey Wednesday, where we drink the finest whiskey and we argue about the internet's most important topics. Because there's anything that the internet doesn't love more, it's arguing and telling people that they're wrong. So true. With each topic, we may not really agree with this topic, but guess what? We're gonna die on this hill. So grab something to drink, sit back, and enjoy the somewhat adequate conversation today. <laughs> I'd like to take a second and ask you to subscribe to our YouTube. The reason why we'd like you to subscribe is because we put out this content quite frequently. What's it, like once a week? Every week. Roughly. And uh, we have a great time drinking and talking about fun topics. And we'd like you to also talk about that with us. So if you could just leave a comment, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and maybe uh, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down. If you can, thumbs sideways. We wish you could be here drinking with us, but since you can't be, the next best thing you can do is leave a comment below. We'd love to hear what you guys think about this topic and what you would like to hear on the next topic. Yeah, maybe what you're drinking today. Yep. So let's just get things started today with what we're drinking. I'm taking us down a little bit different of a path. We're doing a Tennessee whiskey, and we're doing Tennessee probably one of, the, whiskey. one of the most famous Tennessee whiskeys yeah. is Jack Daniels. 100%. I'm normally not a big Jack Daniels fan, but I saw this one the other day, and two reasons why I picked it up. Okay, why? One. The bottle's amazing. I want, Square. This, I want this bottle. It's just there's something cool about this bottle. And two, it says single barrel select. And I've talked about single barrels right. before. Yeah. I'm like, okay, this is, this is something a little bit more special about this, Jack Daniels. That's why I picked it up. But the reason why I brought it today is because the topic we're going to be talking about is a little bit also a little different than how we've been. Absolutely. We've been talking about guns drinking bourbon. Yeah. Today we're going to be talking about vehicles. Drinking Tennessee Drink whiskey. Drinking Tennessee whiskey. Listen to Chris Stapleton. I mean, probably not, right? Mm. No, man. I'm in. I I'm in for that. So, why don't you pour us a little bit while I talk a little bit about this. So there's actually, there is so much history with Jack Daniels. I could have gone had a whole hour podcast or video talking about Jack Daniels. But it, there's, I wanted to kind of focus on some of the things that makes this different specifically. Obviously, being in Tennessee is different, but smells good. Uh, this is a 94 proof, hand-selected single barrel. Mm. So what that means is, again, is generally when, when whiskey's made, they make hundreds of barrels and then they, they blend it together to, to make the, the flavor profile they want. That one. Yeah. This is literally, there is one barrel that they took, they selected that barrel, tasted it, said this is a great barrel, let's bottle this, and then they bottle it straight into the bottle. So that's, that's kind of what, what makes this a little more special. It's not a blended thing. This is straight out of the barrel. Uh, it is 80% corn, 12% barley, 8% rye, which is the same mash bill that they use on all Jack Daniels. The thing again, the things that's different is it came from a single barrel. It came from a single barrel, and then the other thing that I learned about this is the the uh, these bottles are also aged in barrels on the top floor of where they okay. age them. Yeah. And the reason and the reason why that's special is the the temperature swings up there is more drastic. Ah. Than it is on the bottom, so you get a more mature. That's pretty interesting. Whiskey because of that, and yeah, so I, I, th I thought that was that, that that was also kind of interesting. That is fascinating. Yeah. Um, something else that makes Jack Daniels in in total very different. Again, this is not a bourbon because it's not held to the same standards that a bourbon is. But one of the things that makes Jack Daniels special different is they do what's called charcoal mellowing. Yeah. What they do is they stack. A bunch of hard maple, like a, a, I think okay. I think they say they do it like two or three times a day. They they stack a bunch of hard maple, douse it with unaged whiskey, and set it on fire. And it burns at two thousand degrees, makes makes all these coals. They rake all those coals together. Okay. And they actually drip the unaged whiskey, the mash. Through, through the that. charcoal. It's like a charcoal kind of filtration. Yeah, a kind of charcoal filter. And, and, and what they say it does is they say it takes years of the barrel aging off. Interesting. Like, you know, because you, know, you get some of the mellowing, this is their words, it, it, it mellows it out and it, it gets a lot of flavor 
and you know, it, within the first, it's, it, they say it takes three to five days for it to go all the way through. Interesting. Yeah, so it's not a, it's not a quick thing. This take, is pre-aging, right? Right, yeah. Okay, so, so they're starting off with what would be considered a unique product, pre-aged, and then they put it in barrels. Yeah, yeah, okay. so they'll do the charcoal mellowing, and then they will barrel it. And another thing that was interesting, they're one of the very few, I, I, I don't look up numbers here, that I'm going off their website, one of the very few distillers that actually makes their own barrels. Oh, so, so there's a dude there putting there's, together a barrel. There's a whole shop wow. dedicated to just making their own barrels. Instead of, that's pretty you know, cool. I, I think a lot of distilleries use like a you know, barrel yeah. maker. There's a, there's, a, there's a name for it that's, that's escaped me right now. If you know what, if you know what they're called, the people that, that make barrels, I, I know it. Yeah, let us know in the comments. It's, 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 it's on the yeah. tip of my tongue, but I, I, I can't think of it. So they have their own people that make their own barrels. So very unique, very cool. They've been doing this for over 150 years. That's fascinating. Yeah, and, I did not know And again, there's a ton of history about Jack Daniels, where it came from and everything. And I started yeah. writing some of that stuff down, but I kind of wanted to try to keep this a little bit on the short side. And just really talking about the things that make it different. This bottle looks like a bottle. You know, like you get a bottle that's made cut from crystal. You put it on your, your mantle piece there, and that's what you pour your whiskey into out of the, the bottle that comes yeah. in, because the bottle that comes in that's is what, That's why I grabbed this, because I this think. This bottle looks like that bottle. Yeah. Take the stickers off. That's what I'm doing. That's why I bought this bottle. It's this, gorgeous. This bottle's super cool. Yeah. I mean, I may leave the label on there, because it's nice looking. I'd buy this to turn it into a water bottle. So actually, the, the shirt that I'm wearing you is wear actually. Your, yeah. Uh, we call this the. Uh, we, stamp? I think we called whiskey it the, the, the whiskey, uh, the whiskey like that, yeah. logo. We but should do those shirts again. The shirt was designed after like a Jack Daniels type type label. Yeah. All right, you ready to taste this? Taste our I, first Tennessee. I can already tell you a few things about it. Okay. It's sweet. I know it's gonna be sweet. Smell the corn. You can smell the sweetness of it. Yeah, you can definitely smell. It definitely smells different than anything else. Oh, very different. Very different flavor profiles here. One, it comes on strong. It's 94 proof. It's not a low yeah. proof. No, it's a burner. It's not, I mean, to me, it's not overpowered. It's, it's not gonna. It's, it's not too much. Yeah, but it's, it's but you know it's there. But you know, I think I've said before, like once you get to 100, proof is when I might throw a, throw a cube or two in there or something. This, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't need to ice in this. Yeah. It might kind of open it up a little bit and be nice, but. So, right off the bat here, you feel on the roof of your mouth, you feel that alcohol hit. Coach the mouth. Yeah. And you can kind of feel it kind of flail more than what you're making it do. But what I think is really interesting is it's still got that strong oak flavor yep. right over top of it. But it's different than the oak flavors you might taste in a bourbon. It's a little... It's, 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 all right, so to me, I get, I, get, I get sweetness right away. Yeah. And then and that sweetness kind of changes Changes some some flavors, kind of maybe goes from like a honey to a vanilla or something, and then oh, I see what you're saying. At the end, you get that spice. You get like a pepper spice. That's probably that 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 rye in there. Like it's only eight percent rye, but that rye probably adds that adds that spice to it. I end. also think that spice comes from the alcohol content somewhat too. Sure. Because you get that like tingly feel with this one. Yeah, it's really good. I like it. I don't think it's my favorite, but I like it. What do you? You like rice, so what do you think of this one? But this isn't rye. This eight percent of it's rye. No, it's eighty percent corn. So I would say this is more like a rye, though, than what we have been. Some of those milder whiskeys we've been it's, tasting. It's, I don't know. It's got a little more. So even it's been a little bit since, since I had a taste. So I'm I'm still picking up flavors and stuff. Mm -hmm. I definitely get a lot of oak at, at the afterwards after everything. Back here. Yeah, I definitely yeah. get a lot of the oak. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I bought this and I was a little, again, I bought it because the bottle was super cool and it said single barrel, sold. But then I was hoping when I got home and actually opened up that I would not actually enjoy it. And I've actually, I've had a couple glasses of this since I got it. And I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know, on my scale, would I buy it again or not? Absolutely. On mine? This is one that I would, yeah. that I would like to have again. Mine's like five, five and a half. I think it's good. I don't think it's mind blowing. Hmm. Five and a half is, a little over mid, mid tier for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about the other things that you've rated. Mm-hmm. Cause I think the highest mark you've given anything is like a seven and a half or eight and a half. Eight and a half. Yeah. 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 
because yeah. I've had some really bad alcohols, and uh, I know where those lie. And none of these have been that. I kind of want to. I kind of want to bring in. Just like, like I want to try to find something that's a one. Oh, you can. I want to bring something in that you just spit out. Here's what you're gonna do. Go to the store, look down. Grab something in a plastic bottle. Guaranteed, I just spew it out of my mouth. So, here, here's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Not next week, because I have next week's picked out. Maybe the one after that. I'm gonna bring in two. Oh, are we doing blind testing? I'm, I'm gonna do a blind test. <laughs> I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go buy the cheapest, the cheapest whiskey I can find. Yeah. And then I'll pick something else of my, out of my collection that, that, that I yeah. know is, is very good. And Oh, yeah. I like this palette testing idea. Yeah, that'd be fun. I think it'll be very fun. If you want us to do that, let us know. We're gonna do it with this. Or yeah, let me know what, what's the worst whiskey that you've had. <laughs> let me know. And I'm gonna try to find that and buy it. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll, pick, out, I'll pick out something really good. I kinda wanna do one for you where I pour whiskey into like three different glasses, four different glasses, and then I give you names on sticky notes and you try and like mm. match them up. So one thing I've seen people do like in some of the whiskey groups that I'm in mm -hmm. is they'll actually do a bra do brackets. They'll take every whiskey they have and they'll pair them up mm. and then it'll do, do, it's all blind, blind tasting. They'll right. come down to the top whiskey two, bracket. And then, two and the top one. Cause then you but, really know what your favorite one is and you're not just judging it by the bottle and the history. Maybe one of these we'll just do like. No debate. N yeah, no debate, no topic. We're just gonna do like the top, top six. Maybe what we should do is take all the ones we've done so far. Oh yeah. And do those blind. That's a great idea. Yeah, maybe that's the way to that's do it. That's a good move. So maybe, yeah, for one of our our upcoming, like we'll we'll just chat, we'll just hang out and chat, and yeah. and we'll twentieth episode we'll bracket. special. Yeah, something like that. That'd be really yeah, cool. Yeah, that'd be fun. All right, all right. Well, I think it's probably time to get to. I think we should. Our topic. I think we should. Today we're going to be talking about which vehicle. Oh is the best bug out vehicle between my Jeep. Hi. Okay. Oh, weird. Dude just walked in. All right. Um, breaking news. Oh. Massive fallout has just occurred and everyone you know is dead. Oh, how sad. Stranded, oh, goodness. Stranded cars, flooding, flooding and fires have created blockages and looters are everywhere. You must drive 565 miles to Jack Daniels Distillery in Lynchburg, Tennessee. Deal. Done. The only way to save yourself is to drink the sweet nectar that flows from its handmade white oak barrels. Good luck and Godspeed. Apparently this won't save us that no, we have right here. We have to drive almost 600 miles. Yeah, I thought this was like a special barrel. To get the fresh stuff. But, I don't know, the world's ending. We should probably go. Maybe they knew. Yeah, I, I mean. I'm gonna take. The world's ending, you can right, do I can take now, it, right? right? I think that's fine. Let's yeah. get out of here. All right, let's do it. It is a nice day outside for an apocalypse. Beautiful day for an apocalypse. I can't wait. Bottle. Like, gonna be it's rainy. A perfect time to grab an AR and a bottle of whiskey and start driving. That, that doesn't like, seem. When else? When else can you do this? You're gonna drive like five miles an hour there the whole way, riding no. the yellow line. Nope. Hmm. Well, we'll see about that. Right, so, uh, <laughs> why don't you tell me about your your ride here? What's your specs? This right here is a 2021 Kia. Seltos XX Turbo. Okay. Bad boy's got 175 horsepower, 202 foot pounds of torque. Bad mamma jamma snow tires. Ooh. And best of all, it looks like a mom car. Yeah, it does. Nobody about to rob this thing. Doesn't what's your have anything inside of it? What's your horsepower? 175. It's cute. What's yeah. your what's your torque? 202. It's cute. Yeah. Um, oh, looks, looks like you got like a couple inches of ground clearance there. Got, uh, it's got a great eight and a half inches of ground clearance. Wow. I believe that's correct. That's pretty, that's pretty. Yep. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. So. That's exactly what you need to drive on grass, which is what you're going to be driving which is, on. Which is exactly what I'm going to be pushing out of the way mm. with this bad name of jammer right here. That's what he says. 2020 Jeep Rubicon Gladiator lifted two inches. 37s, lockers front and back, bumper with a winch, I got lights, I got a lockable bed that I can fill with 1,700 pounds I can load this up with. I can even tow over 5,000 pounds. I've got 285 horsepower, 260 feet pound, uh, pounds of torque. I've got all that I need to drive through 
this field if I want to, whereas he would get stuck right here in this breakover angle. No, I got he, that. He wouldn't even make it. Sideways. So, I don't know. If, if I was coming out and I had to drive through an apocalypse, it's not even really you an option to me. to me? This is, this is what I'm getting. Resupply for somebody who's bigger and stronger I mean, than you are. My tires are about as tall as your hood, so yeah. you're not fording much water in this Don't thing, need to. It's called you roads. You might have to. No, roads, we, heart, we just got on the letter that the roads are blocked. So? There's it's cars scattered everywhere, there's looters. You're Grass? Not, I'm not taking roads. You can drive through this. This is nothing. There's no way. Let's see you do it. I'll, no. pull, you, I'll pull you out. No, you won't. No, you're right, I won't. <laughs> I already know better. All right, well. You're going to grand tour me and just drive off. I say we go... Doesn't sound like there's a big hurry to get down there because we're the last ones alive, other than looters or something. I, it was, I, I assumed there was looters. It was kind of confusing. Yeah, they were like, everyone's dead that you know. I don't know many looters, but it just seems like we should just. Well, let's go talk about which one of these. Should we just argue about this for is, a while Yeah, let's, let's go. Let's, I'm going to grab the whiskey. I mean, that's probably, I left mine inside, so. All right. Okay. <laughs> Whew. All right, so we just learned some shocking news. We just showed you guys our our vehicles. We're clearly we're gonna stick with. I'm sticking with my Jeep. You know my. And I actually I actually can't wait to do this because I'm just gonna just. This is gonna be the easiest debate. He's been giggling about that this. I've ever. This is just, it's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. It's ridiculous. No, there is there's not. nothing. There's no reason to pick the accountant's Kia over Listen, the man's Jeep. I've literally thought of three reasons. Before you had one on your paper, I had three already because, written down. Because I wrote down the one, my first one, and I'm like, I don't need any others. That's not at all what happened. <laughs> that is exactly Stop. what happened. That was exactly what happened. All, all right. right. You want to so, go first then, Mr. I've Got the Greatest? All right. Here are the top three reasons why you should take my Jeep, or why I'm going to take my Jeep, down to Jack Daniels over his little sissy car. First one, I can go anywhere, mm. nearly anywhere, especially way more places than his little car. So our, I, I, was, I was thinking about this. So our building here, mm -hmm. where our shop is, we have fields and some kind of scraggly little woods mm -hmm. behind us. One way in the road floods pretty often. They actually block it off after heavy rain because there's, sure, there's sure. some flooding on the roads and stuff. Yeah. And the other way goes towards town, okay. right? So if things go nuts, and I have to bug out of here, I can go any of those ways. I can go through the flooded road. Sure, yeah. I can go through the fields behind us, or I can go through town. I can, my Jeep can wade through water almost as tall as me. Yeah, how high is your intake? I mean, definitely taller than the hood of your car. Or like, the, my, my bumper comes up about yeah. like where your airbox is. Yeah. So. I, I, I haven't measured. I went outside of the tape measure. Mine's 32 and a half inches off the ground. Yeah, that's... Perfect. That's nothing. That's, like, great. So, I'm going to be able to come up to rivers and streams and roads that are way deeper than yours and be able to go through them. The fields behind us, I'll just I'll throw, throw it in four low and lock front and back and just go straight through. And if I need to go through town, that's no problem, but I'm probably not going to because things are probably insane over there. I'm probably going to go through the flooded way or, or the woods. All right, so the so Jeep, his. so we've established the Jeep can go anywhere that the Kia can go and then some. Mm. The next thing is the Jeep can tow and haul way more weight than what yours can. So let's sure. say, yeah. let's say I've got a side-by-side -side on a trailer and I want to bring it with me. Who knows? Why not? Or I have a covered bug out, uh, trailer and I want to bring that with me. Or let's just say I've got a bunch of stuff in the back of, in, the, in the bed of my Jeep that I can keep fuel back there. Mm -hmm. I can keep food back there mm -hmm. since I have the, uh, uh, the Diamondback cover like locked, sealed. It's actually more secure than the cab of, my, uh, of, of any car. So I can lock things back there, keep them secure, put a ton more weight in there and, it, and it'd be fine. So that's number two. And the number three, I actually, the first thing I wrote down is um, you look way cooler driving a Jeep than you do a Kia, but the more I thought about that mm -hmm. is I look like way less of an easy target than somebody driving a That's Kia. That's not true at all. If things go bonkers and they see you yeah. 
in a Kia or they see me in a Jeep, they're going for, they're going for you. That's good, I'll take their stuff. They're, 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 gonna, they're gonna come and, and take you out while I'm like driving by. Oh, so, is that so? So those are, those are, my, those are my main three things. I, I can go anywhere you can go and then some. I can take way more stuff with me than you can. And I am gonna be way less of an easy target. One, they're gonna be able to find me because I'm gonna be driving through wherever I want to. They're gonna be stuck on the side of the road. That's actually not the so, things I thought that you would have all right. underneath your world of points for the Jeep. So I have some actual pros for your car that you didn't even mention. I don't need any more pros. Those are you the main do, actually. Those yes. are the main ones. So first of all, all it's right. very unlikely you're gonna be driving through a field, right? Most of the roads have some form of grassy knolls on the side of it that you can drive through. Okay? So really you need a vehicle that is able to handle pretty, you know, slick grass and a mild incline. If you can handle slick grass and a mild incline, which not every vehicle can, okay, but it is what you need to handle. See, that's what you think about because that's all your car can do. No, that's not true. So if you're on the highway and you're like, okay, that median doesn't seem too deep, I okay. guess I can go that way. Whereas... You were with me when we off-roaded a rental vehicle, which by the way was a Toyota Corolla. So in the middle of nowhere. All right, so I want, I want you to get through, your, hit your three points and then we're gonna. Okay, yeah, we're gonna, all right, gonna so my three points, which involve the more modest and useful things, is one, gas will be extremely scarce, okay? We've had moments in this country where we aren't in an apocalypse situation where you can't get gas and or gas is extremely expensive and people are hogging it all, okay? That happens like every five years, six years. Secondarily, I get really good gas mileage in my car, even at low speeds, especially, you know, my car drives at 55 miles an hour roughly the most efficiently. And so I did a little testing when I knew we were gonna talk about this. And to go from my house to work uses less than a gallon of gas. I live about 26 miles away. Now, um, when driving as economically as possible, I can get up to 33 miles to the gallon, even though the car says it can only do 31, which is fantastic. And then driving around town, when I don't stop at stop signs, not that I ever did that, um, you can get about 22, 25. So that's fairly decent gas mileage. With that being said, I've calculated it out and my car tells me like how many miles I can go. I can do 426 miles on a 13.7 gallon tank. So what that means is two five gallon tans can get me over three quarters of the way full of gas and I can do on five gallons roughly 375 miles. So on a trip, say, from here to Tennessee, where it's 600 miles, I would need exactly one tank plus a five gallon uh, of gas. And that is perfectly easy and adequate. I can put that in my passenger seat, okay? So that's my first point. My second point, um, all-wheel drive is extremely good, especially with snow tires. It's extremely good at off-roading. Um, in the situations that we have here in Ohio, even in the southern part of Ohio where things are pretty hilly. Um, I won't be wading my vehicle through rivers. I think that's extremely risky to take the one thing that you have that's an asset to you and put it at risk by going through a river. And then I, I won't be going through fields where I could get stuck and have to get out of my car and winch myself out of the thing. I'm going to find a route in which I can drive, I can avoid vehicles, and I can stay in a place where my car is not going to get taken from me. And then lastly, my car does not attract a ton of attention. Greg's point of everyone thinking he looks like uh, a bad mamma jamma, in my opinion, is the same thought as open carrying a gun, right? Is it better to conceal carry or open carry? Well, we've had this debate, and conceal carry, in my opinion, is still the best way to go, and open carry doesn't seem to ward off people as much as people think it does, and so as such, I think that having a car that looks like you're just a mom trying to get home to her kids is much less of a target for resource gathering than a guy who's got gas cans on his roof and a uh, diamondback cover and lifted up stuff and neomag plastered all over his Jeep. So that's my thoughts on the subject. So we've established that no matter what, we're gonna need gas and grass is gonna be hard to get. We both are gonna need one to fill up to get Right, the only difference is I will need seven, 16 gallons. You will need 
28 gallons. Yeah, so either way, so it's basically like we need half more gas. Of what you need. It, it doesn't really matter. And eventually, in this fallen world, none of us are going to be driving anything because eventually Pushing gas that will, car. Eventually, both vehicles are going to get left on the side of the road because yep. they are useless to us because we can't find gas anyway. Right. So to me, the gas thing, okay, it may be a little bit more of an inconvenience because I have to find more, but I'm still going to have to find more. And again, I don't have to fill up my passenger seat with gas cans to get places. I have a bed. I mean, I have an I can, entire back seat that, that pulls down. Right, so you're going to have to put fuel inside with you. Sure. Instead of keeping gonna, things like food and stuff separate from your gas, you're going to have to keep, which again, we're going to Tennessee here in this situation. Right, Tennessee. It's not so, that far away. But in a more extreme situation, I can keep fuel and tools and stuff like that in, in, in the bed of my truck separate from me and my family and food and that sort of thing, which I'll definitely take over driving a little fake SUV. So we've established that the, the fuel thing is, is, is an issue. I'll mm -hmm. give it to you. But to sure. me, it's not as big of an issue because we're all going to we're all, we're all gonna have to find gas anyway. I mean, I have enough gas in my house to go there. I do too. So there we go. Problem solved. I mean, yeah. So yeah. The, the, again, getting back is the issue. <laughs> to me, the gas is kind of a non-issue. Yeah. It is an issue, but it's also kind of a non-issue. And uh, all right, what was your other? All-wheel drive with snow tires is really capable of doing most anything off-road we might need here in Ohio. So let's be. Uh, let's just be honest with me. My Jeep can go way more places than your than your Kia can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So the options that I have to take are, I have way more options to take. To Your risk? To get out. Yes. No, same so amount of risk. same thing. For you driving through. Would be less risky for you. For you driving through a kind of somewhat steep, muddy filled median. Would be more risky than it would be for you. Right. Yes, absolutely. So your risk level is here. No, here. Here, my risk level for is here. doing the same task. Yes. Right? So, again, the options that I have to, to, to take going through a six foot deep river, yes, is, that's not great. But if I have, if I have, if I, if I have a choice between these people are trying to kill me and that side's safe, sure. I'm going for it. Uh, whereas you don't have that choice. You are going to die if you try to go through a six foot deep Maybe. river. Maybe. You're, you're done. No, I just find a way around with my hyper gas mask. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> The, the last point that I made the, was that uh, I don't attract as much attention. Yeah. So, and, and the attention thing. Yeah. That's again. That's 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 why I'm actually I'm going to try to find routes that are not seen as much. One, so I can kind of hang hang low and yeah. and, and whatever. But again, I can I can take the same roads that, that you can, and you taking a left through a sketchy looking median, or me going through. Going to the right, with with a with an amazing uh, approach angle that I have and stuff like oh that. Oh gosh! It's just you haven't I, I, even hit on your best qualities yet, and it blows me away. Those are those are again. There no. may be more. There may be more more qualities, but those your are the best ones that I need. Has a bumper that is capable of pushing another vehicle without damaging itself. Sure, I've got winches. I didn't got, even mention that because right? I because I don't. I, I have so many more tools no. to use than you no. do. I'll just put but a it doesn't even bush gun it doesn't even matter. Call it a day. Right. Yep. Yeah, they make all those amazing brush they guards with, bush guards with for Kia winches. Seltos. <laughs> they don't have winches on them, but zip ties. And then, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that's a major quality that you do have is the ability to move vehicles, right? Yeah, I can push stuff out. I can go um, over. Th I can now. I can drive over your Seltos. That being said, my car will get much further than your car will because I will be able to drive if there's no one on the road, assuming like everyone died and. The, like the, the the apocalypse. The only thing that you have to go to is, is fuel mileage. That's the only and speed. That's your only thing. You've dr driven driving your car, which I've done at seventy five miles an hour, is way more sketchy than driving my car. Yeah, so, you don't even that know that it's driving at seventy five miles an hour. Well, sure, I got thirty sevens. I also get. But I can still go one hundred miles an hour. Sure, not for very long. No. <laughs> maybe maybe not even for a hundred miles. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah, I could. I drive 80 everywhere, and guess what? I get great gas mileage. Yeah, it's tough when you get pulled over. Then I drive zero, and then I drive 80 again. <laughs> the uh, yeah, the gas mileage thing is even at high speeds. Yeah, you know, I get 25 miles to the gallon at 80 miles an hour. I'll be in Tennessee with the whiskey and back before you get to Tennessee. 
I'm yeah, if, if safe it's safe in my own home. If it's if you and me are racing there, so that's that's then, risk mitigation, if you ask me. Then you're gonna beat me for sure. Less time on the road. But I didn't drive. I don't drive a. a a jacked up Jeep with 37s because I want speed. No, that's, that's true. That's, that's, I just We've not even. We've established that. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't drive I don't, a Kia because I want speed either, though, to be fair. Right. It's yeah. not a race car, even though it could be. You drive it because you look pretty. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so, I just, I, I, I feel like. I actually think my car is I, I, a much I, better bug out vehicle than yours. I, I, we just established that it's not. No, we didn't. I yeah, just we gave did. you one pro that I thought you should have hit on, and you didn't. What, that I have a bumper? Yes, that you have a bumper. <laughs> you, can push, at, you can push stuff with yours, too. You're going to damage your, your front end more. Let's look at uh, the people who were causing all the mass riots up in uh, whatever it was, Washington. What is the one thing that you end up doing in a world where people are upset with each other and apocalyptic? It's either hitting people or it's pushing cars out of your way. You have the capabilities to do those things. Okay, so you're just adding more. I, that I, is the only benefit that you actually have. No. Because off-roading is something that I've never, ever, 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 ever seen in a situation. Because you don't see them, because they're off-road. No, they're not. You can't see them. They're stuck they, behind the they've wrong gone, cars. They've gone off-road. Off They've they, they, they no. found that they've hit oil roads. They've hit, no. they've hit like, especially if, if you're in a state like Utah or Montana or something like that, where you, can, you can just go. I've seen, I've seen once in the wildfires in California where there was a bunch of Toyota Corollas off-roading to uh, so, get from one side of the highway to the other side of the highway to avoid a fire. We're, we're, we're big Top Gear fans, oh, right? Oh, big time. And yeah. we're big uh, Grand Tour fans. And how many things have we watched where all three of the guys pick, like, cars yes. for some off-road excursion? And, yes. And the whole time we're watching them, like, why You're making did you my point. do that? No. Yes. Here's the point. Just because most of the time they can't do it. They they're, do. They're, they're breaking tie rods. They're they're having to re-weld things sure. back together. Yes. And as we're watching it, we're like, if they just picked a Jeep, they That's wouldn't true. have to do with anything. If they did, right? Except for the so, time when they did pick a Jeep and it still broke. No, they never. He, he picked a Samurai. No, he picked the Jeep. Jeep Wrangler. Did the whole like jungle thing. Went to the woods. It still broke down. It, Not a ton, but it, it did break down. All the things we watched where they took cars. And it we, may have been because he put scaffolding in the back. <laughs> <laughs> but it still broke down. Everything we watched where they pick cars, we're like, why would they? Why do they keep picking cars for these things? It is the worst choice. Mm. Pick something that has ground clearance. Pick I something. I recall Richard that Hammond has articulation. Putting giant tires on a big pickup truck. The, the massive truck that he got. And it literally well, it was couldn't a, get out of the ocean. It was a monster truck. That's totally different. That's what they had the same size tires you had. No. 37s? That that truck had massive tires. He said they were 37s, from my I memory. So. I think, which I is think it, perfect. It was like he a, said it was, it was like a monster truck. It doesn't have like flames on the side of it. <laughs> <or something. laughs> it was it was literally a monster truck. I think he because I remember he couldn't get into it. He had to he get had a, to step have a ladder. ladder. <laughs> it was lifted it was, in your truck. It was way bigger than it was the, way lifted. My Jeep. But the so, point is Adding larger tires to your vehicle decreases its performance overall, decreases its gas mileage, doesn't necessarily help its overall oh, off-road capability. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, 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 no. Putting bigger tires on your, it depends on what you're putting it on. If you, yep. if you put 37s on your car, yes, nope. it is absolutely destroyed. Oh, okay, so you're gonna say that your gear ratios are made for 37s? Yes. No, they're not. They are. If they were, they would've put 37s on them. No, they don't put 37s on it because they're trying to meet mm -mm. a gas, the, the gas mileage. Do you have a 410? You, it, it, let me tell. If, so if you go out to the Jeep days out, it's yeah. Out of suddenly, you're going to go around to Been all the there. Jeeps and be like, if you guys would have put 29s on your on your car mm -hmm. on your Jeeps, you guys would be doing way better. I've literally been out there. That we is just ridiculous. Take a normal Jeep, and they do just as well no, in the mud pits. That is not true. That is true. That is absolutely not true. I, You've not gone out there enough. I've gone out there three times. Every single time we've gone out there, we've been right behind all the lifted Jeeps in a standard Toyota Land Cruiser and whatever it was that we ended up Guys, beaching. I can't, I can't, how do I have this conversation? We this is the most filled ridiculous, it with water, to be fair. It's the most but ridiculous thing. So we've established it's, fuel, it's fuel doesn't useless. matter. More, more off-road capability does not hurt you enough on-road. It just gives you capability off-road. Oh, that's not what we established. And we've established that you look way cooler. We've established that I'm going to get to Tennessee and back before Greg. I'm going to get there with less gas, and I'm going to do way more with the capabilities that I have 
then he will here's, with his no, Jeep. Here's the thing. If this road is blocked out because people went nuts, mm -hmm. this road has a 64 inch, I don't know, I can't remember, did you say six? No, it's 32. 32, yeah. 33 inch water. This is a little higher than this table. Like your, right no, wait, wait, wait. Your, your wading depth is not even as deep as my t tires are tall. That's correct. Right, yeah, so, so if, this, if this water is as, deep as, are ridiculous. is as deep as my tires, he can't go through it. He's gonna break his ankle getting out of his vehicle. If you can't take the two roads, you're screwed. I can just go through I, the grass. I can, I can ford the water and I can go through the, the field behind me. You're not even gonna be able to get out of the building I would be to get willing to, to bet you going back in this field, which I've been in, by the way, and stuck in, in an off-road vehicle. I would bet you can't take that and do that in your Jeep. It would be rough. I would I'm bet you'd lie. be stuck. You'd be high risking it, and then you'd have to walk all the way to Tennessee. But me, I would just patiently go through people's front lawns like a psychopath and make my way to Tennessee. I'll just go back in my office and drink this. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to know what you guys want to think. <laughs> yep. Would a, and here's the car that I drive, a 2021 Kia Seltos SX Turbo be a better bug out vehicle than a 2020 Jeep Rubicon lifted two inches with 37s Bumper with a winch, mm -hmm. lockable bed. Gosh, I like just so many other. Twenty-seven things. gallon tank, whatever it is. I don't know, actually, I'm not even sure. Yeah, it's got. I, I know I, I I can get highway speeds. I can I can go 350 miles on the tank. Yeah, but what is your gas mileage? On the highway is probably like 18, 19. 19. Okay, so it gets 10 miles to the gallon less than I do. At we both still need a filter to get for here. me. Yeah. Both need to fill it. But my gas sits in the front tank and yours has to go in a trailer behind your car. All right, let's just get this All over right, let's with. Let's get this over with. <laughs> Guys, let us know which one that you would that you would take and let us know topic that you'd like to hear next time. Speaking of next time. Oh yeah. Let's talk about. We got some topics, don't we? What we want to talk about next time. Let me go to my <sighs> topic list here. All right, what would make the best babysitter? Joe Biden or Giselle Maxwell? Uh, uh, uh. I ain't even giving that an answer. No. Well, probably Joe Biden, because he's just going to sniff your children. No. Ugh. <laughs> it's <a> terrible. Name. <laughs> no. Next. Next? All right. Um, what is scarier to a Democrat, COVID or midterm elections? <laughs> well, they've forgotten about COVID. Or at least so I think. So midterm elections are coming up. Yeah. And they'd be panicking. It's not looking good. Not looking good. I think it's got to be elections, right? Yeah, COVID is only scary when the news plays it. Yeah, but COVID, the COVID's wiping out About countries. Billions. Just built by just bodies. One seventh of the world population is now dead. Bodies stacking <laughs> in the Jeez. streets because of COVID. So I don't know. Gonna have to use those all-wheel drive. That's a tough one. All right. So. Let's go with maybe a little more of a reasonable okay. one. And we're gonna kind of stay in the, in the track that we're, we're kind of talking about today a little bit. Oh. So, we're, we, we're, we're, we, in this situation we were told we had, we had to go somewhere. But if things go sideways, mm. would you bug in or would you bug out? Oh, hands down. I'd bug in. You'd what would you in? do? I think I'm bugging out. I'm getting out of here. Why? I'm gonna find some place that's not so populated. Nah, I'm bugging in. That has Let's resources that I can rape and pillage on the way and fill my Jeep with. I got plenty of resources to rape I, and pillage. I've got, I've got, I got, we've established I have the best vehicle to bug out, so I might as well use that and go bug out. Man, I can't wait for someone to jack your car while you're out there. I'll jack them with the bumper of my Jeep. The bumper of your Jeep. And I'll pull them along with my. Well, I'm gonna stay where all my resources are and where all of my neighbors are and just bug in. Yep. I think we should talk about that. All right. Okay, next week. Bug in or bug out. Cool. Guys, let us know what you think you would do with your situation. Bug in or bug out. Well, that's next week. Let us know that next week. Yeah, next week. Please. Yeah, okay. Well, no, let us know so that way when we talk, come to talk about it next week, we can maybe... Sure, there's a lot of stuff you have you requirements to put. There's a lot this episode. What you drinking? Uh, do you think the Kia is better than the, the, the whatever he has he drives? And uh, are, you, are you bugging in or bugging out? Look at something else too. Uh, I can't remember. Go back to the beginning. Yeah, just just watch it again. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.